That's why we really need to worry about who's going to control these elections. There's lots more we could talk about, but why don't I ask you for whatever questions you have and what you want to talk about. Yes? The, 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 uh, the group that certifies the elections, what are they called? The Canvas Board. The Canvas Board. And that's a state agency? No, no. I'm so glad you asked that question. Because there's something you can do about this for this one election only. This is the last time we can do we can have real, real, real control. All right. So let me explain what the Canvas Board is and then I'll talk about the action point. Canvas Board are citizens appointed by the major parties. So your Republican Party in Boulder County and whatever, Broomfield County and others, will appoint one to two people for the Canvas Board. It is citizens, not the government, who certifies the election. Citizens. All right. Well, what tends to happen is that if we have knowledgeable Republicans, and we don't have a lot of them who've been trained on this, and they see problems, they will say, whoa, 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 we're not certifying this election. Well, the clerk gets a vote and the Democrats get a vote. Guess what happens? Every election gets certified. However, think about who are the major parties for this one last year? American Constitution Party, Republican Party, um, and the Democratic Party. All right, what they did in Boulder is they worked hard to have some people change affiliation, sign up with the American Constitution Party, be appointed for the Canvas Board, and took control of the Canvas Board. That can happen in every single county in the state. It is the way for the people to get back in control of their elections this one time. And I'm not suggesting for a moment that you should fail to certify an election if it's a good election, mm -hmm. but it gives you the power. Now, do those boards have the power to sue uh, clerks, in, like in the case of, of the clerk signing a, a, a false uh, statement of certification? That would generally not come from them. Unfortunately, that would be a criminal offense and that you'd have to go to the DA. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, good luck with that. One of the things that I filed quite a few um, um, of these complaints with the DAs across the state, you get the same answer from almost everyone. That is, we don't mess with elections, we mess with real crimes. Uh -huh. yeah. Or what we've also found is, oh wait, my name, I'm the DA, my name was on that ballot, I can't do anything. It would look like a conflict of interest. Go away. Um, Chafee County, uh, a couple of years ago, I want to come back to, to the, um, to, I should finish up on Canvas Board. Go find your Republican county chairs. Say, let's go get an American Constitution Party member who will either be really active or let's fi find a, a person who will get active and be involved and let them have that American Constitution Party seat. And the reason for the American Constitution Party uh, Tom Tancredo. Is, is because of Tancredo's run for governor in the last cycle, and right. they actually got top spot on the ballot. So well, that's going to go away I mean, after this cycle, mostly. Yeah, 10% yeah. is that was, and that's going to go away because there's no third party that's going to get 10%, uh, I don't believe. Yes, yeah. Well, I just, I just wanted to follow up on this because in Boulder County here, since the county and local elections were never properly certified by the Canvas Board, were never certified by the Canvas Board, regardless of properly, never, we're not. What can be done about that? These people are serving in offices illegally. That they weren't elected for. The, the Longmont ban, was it Longmont? Yeah, went in when it wasn't supposed to. And now we're so far down the path that there's really probably nothing, no court's going to do anything. At the time, I was screaming bloody murder. Somebody needs to take this to court and stop this because you're going to have officials sitting in spots and you're going to have a fracking ban that is not supposed to be there. But nobody wants to take it to court. But still, what could have been done? What could, oh, easy, easy, easy. Who could have done? Any citizen. Any resident. What was there any, any, uh, any voter? Any voter. Any voter. What, yes. Was there any political entity interest <clears throat> in challenging that election? Absolutely or, not. 
Absolutely not. So I it beg. It required an individual citizen, not, for example, the chairman of a Republican Party or, or somebody else. They just have to be a voter. Well, the voter kind of Republicans <laughs> They, oh, they're they so, interested. To follow absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but well, why did they not do that? Because it costs money, and now I will tell you that the state party absolutely frowns on such bad behavior. Is taking anything to the? Yeah, you're preaching yes. to the choir there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they tell they we lost our um, really good conservative DA over in um, Pitkin County, Garfield County. And his election got stolen by 184 votes. We knew exactly where it was. It was done. It was some ballot counting that was done in Garfield County in a room where they did not allow any Republicans into the counting room. And we know exactly where it got stolen. And the Republican Party absolutely would not do anything about it because they didn't want to look like bad sports. And you think there's no consequence? Well, Martin Beeson was a you know, not soft on crime guy. Now there's a DA that's like, whatever. Okay, Mike, you had a... Yeah, actually, Stephen asked, what can we do? And the question before that was the makeup of the Canvas Board. Uh, the Canvas Board is made up of just the two of the major republic, of the, the three two major ma the parties. Three major parties. So you have to have major party status to be on the canvas board, which kind of stifles a lot. Half a third of Coloradans are independent, and so they are not represented at all on the canvas board. And that might be one thing that could change. Right. In the legislature, that's one of the things we need to try to do is talk about Get the an unaffiliated member on the canvas board. Right. And then, and I think probably you could do, I've got all sorts of theories about this, but just conceptually, you could say, all right, the uh, top four parties, mm -hmm. you know, have, have seats. So take away the concentration of power. Uh, for, uh, redistricting had an unaffiliated as yes. well that seemed to vote always with the Democrats. So. Yeah. yeah, unaffiliated, it's, it's really sex. tough. Yeah. Really, Random really, sex. really tough. But, but um, you know, one, one of the ways when this is conversations cut off, and you could spend a half a day on this conversation, that I've suggested is that when you finally figure out what your party makeup is going to be, if you've got, you know, three parties and uh, the way you deal with the unaffiliated is to have unaffiliated apply and then have a majority vote of the board as to which of the of the party representatives as to which uh, unaffiliated gets on. It's hard to know, but you don't want it from top down. You want it from the people. Somehow that it's the people, the parties deciding, not the clerk deciding. Any other questions, thoughts? Yes. Just, just a, 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 a point. I live in Arvada, in, and, and my uh, illustrious former city councilwoman, Rachel Zenziger, huh. was appointed to Evil Hudak seat when she vacated. And the, uh, the, Keep talking. The, the city council of Arvada decided to vote secretly three times before uh, an open vote for her replacement. A citizen, a voter in the district, challenged this, took them to court, and the psycho judge said, you don't have standing. That, that was the, uh, sorry, sorry to be laughing at that ruling, but the yeah, lawyers time. around said this was an absolutely laughable decision that Jefferson County should be embarrassed about. Well, yeah, should be. However, the reality is they don't have the money to appeal anything. Because as you pointed out before, a, a regular citizen does it, and it's scads of cash right. you got to uh, put Absolutely. Out. Uh, abs uh, I mean, uh, did you know that Hudak didn't actually win that seat? Yes. Most people don't know this. So Hudak's purportedly winning margin against uh, Lang Sias was 584 votes, but there were 684 ballot envelopes from Republicans that were never opened because the signatures didn't match. I don't deny that the signatures probably didn't match, but nobody followed up. 
Nobody followed up in time. The Republicans could have been doing that every day from the day the ballot came in, calling calling the voters saying, hey, Joe, your signature was thrown out. Get down here and verify it. There can be many reasons that your signature doesn't match. I had a friend who lost, lost his vote because he had broken his arm when he signed the ballot. My mom's signature doesn't look like it used to look. There are many reasons that a signature is thrown out that's still legitimate. And... The, re the Democrats are very smart about this stuff. What they do is their judges take the list home every day of the, it's public record, why not? You know, they take the list home every day of the ballots that are getting rejected. And they call, hey, Sam, get down here. Call them before election day when they care. The Republicans wait till after election day. Why do any work if we don't have to? They wait till after election day and then call so there were 648 Republican ballots. If you assume that almost all of them voted Republican, the, the entire Senate situation would have changed because Republicans would have had the majority this last session with the two recalls in that seat. And the, Republic, the, the, the Republican Party usually says, oh, don't fight over these little things. Don't be a bad sport. Don't challenge anything. That Think about what a difference it would have made this last year had we had a Senate Republican majority. And it was all because of election mechanics. It was all for want of spending the time to chase 648 signatures. Yes? Um, how did this all mail-in ballot business even start? I'm not familiar with Colorado. I mean, why are people crippled? Are they elderly? Are they lazy? I mean, what's the gig? Well, it's got a very, yeah. <laughs> it's got a very. Goal on one day. I agree. Anyone can do a mail-in ballot. Right. I, I believe you can answer this. They're insufficiently <laughs> motivated to vote Democrat. <laughs> so we're going to force them. Right. Okay. It's actually got a pretty interesting history. Um, if we go back to year 2002, some of you may remember that there was a ballot initiative that was on the ballot that was funded by three very liberal Democrats who was, it, they were going to make all mail ballots like we have now, mandatory mail ballots. They spent millions of dollars to promote this issue on the ballot in 2002. It was defeated about 60-40. The population of Colorado said, we don't want that. So these Republicans were, I mean, excuse me, these Democrats were smart enough to say, okay, if the people don't want it, we will find a way to get it anyway. We'll go to the legislature, we're gonna infiltrate the clerks association, we'll convince the clerks how much easier it is for them We'll get the voting systems people on our side and promote the idea of lower cost, less work, and clerks, you get far more control. You don't have to deal with those pesky voters. You just deal with envelopes. And so the clerks come in and start little by little, and the Democrats were very smart about this. They said, we don't, we don't need the whole enchilada the first year. Let's talk about, let's do some sort of local elections. And then let's do primary elections. And they get, oh, the other thing they did was they got the secretaries of state and clerks to make it the default option when somebody goes to register. Mm -hmm. It was the default option to say, put me on the mail ballot list. And you go to the DMV to um, get your driver's license and they have registered, that you listen to them, they start pushing, or they don't need to anymore, but they used to start pushing and pushing, well, you want a mail ballot because that's really convenient. Republican Party went along with it and said, oh yeah, it increases turnout. Well, it does increase turnout, but it increases turnout more for the Democrats than it does for the Republicans. And so then by the time they got to the 2013 legislative session, all that was left were just the general elections. Everything else was already all mail ballot, essentially. Not, not, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but they had gotten everybody used to it, so it didn't take much. There was a Democratic-controlled legislature, the Democratic-controlled Senate, 
Democratic control uh, governor's mansion. And so it was pretty easy to do then. It was done. And the clerks association went along with it. There was only one clerk, even though the majority of clerks are Republicans, there's only one clerk that said this is not a good idea. Who was that and clerk? who is that clerk? <laughs> <laughs> it was Wayne Williams in El Paso County. Who's running for Secretary of State? Yes. Okay. All politics are local, right? Start with what I ask you to do about writing the city, the city council in Castle Rock. I know you don't live in Castle Rock, but just when they begin to feel all this pressure, it, the next community knows. They probably like to know I'm not going to shop there anymore. Yes. Yes. They need to know that you disapprove. And, you know. Email addresses too and inundate them? Because I don't know if I want to put my real email address. Can we just make up email like you make up I don't think they're organized <laughs> enough to do anything about it. I mean, you have Gmail. You can make 50 Gmail accounts. And, you know. I, I, your own tools. I'm not going to suggest that, but, but you know, let them, let them know. And everybody remember that address. It's town council, C O U N C I L, direct at crgov.com. Put the slide back up? Yeah, I'll find it. Um, that's one thing you can do. Um, the other thing, I'm so glad you asked this, and I wish I'd prepared for this just a little, oops, a little bit more. Oh, darn it. Okay, yeah. Um, I did, didn't I? Okay. Now I just need to, it's town council direct at cr, like castle rock, gov com. Town council direct. Now I just need to figure out how to get the whole thing up there. Like that? Oh, good. Thank you. Um, but that's one thing you can do. Now, I sh should have prepared a slide that said, Secretary of State is having rulemaking for this upcoming election on Thursday. Write the Secretary of State. And there are a million rules that need to be changed. But here's the one that we're begging for. They've proposed at our request, and the Democrats and the clerks are fighting it. And that is on ballot harvesting. And um, basically what we have asked is that on the ballot envelope, the return ballot envelope, that it have an affirmation by the voter. If you're going to turn your ballot over to someone else to deliver the guy at your door, that you say, I'm Marilyn Marks, turn over my ballot to Sam Jones of 123 Green Street for delivery. I have voted my ballot in private. I've not let anybody else see it. Sign my name. Is that going to really, really, really stop the bad guys? No, but it will at least inform the voter that they have the responsibility to think about this, not turn it over, and it will record, if anybody's being truthful, it, it will at least record who's turning in these ballots. It will give, give us at least a little bit of awareness. And the whole idea of, of, of awareness to the lower information voter, I know like my mother would never think about it. If somebody came to the door and asked for my mother's ballot, she would give it to them. She would trust them. Um, but if so, if you write Scott Gessler um, address on the Secretary of State's website, and if you don't say anything else, just say stop or ballot harvesting by requiring chain of custody documentation or something like that. Stop ballot harvesting by requiring documentation of who's delivering the ballot. They are having a hearing on this on Thursday with a lot of other subjects as well, but that's one of the key things that you can do. They, what has happened in the past, rulemaking is, as the old saying goes, you make all the laws you want to, just let me make the rules. Well, the Secretary of State has lots of rulemaking authority that they are not, have not been using because what, to, to, to help secure elections because the Democrats, the very liberal organization, show up in force at those hearings. Our side never shows up. We have jobs. 
<laughs> but we do pay a lot of lawyers, you know, through the Republican Party and other things that uh, we've got. That we don't our the the Republican Party and the Libertarian Party don't really inform their constituents about what to do on this. We're not organized on this, or we wouldn't have all mail ballots. Well, thank you all for for your time.